Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Topic number two with Jonathan is going to be something I'm seeing the talking heads on TV talking about, but I wanted to bring in the man and ask him what he thinks. How are you doing, Jonathan? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you? I'm great. I wanted to ask you this question. You know, what do you think is a greater risk? And we'll say short and long term. I'll let you define what you term those periods are of inflation or unemployment. As you know, the talking heads are all about unemployment today. But what do you, when you think about those two risks, what do you think? How do you break them down? Where are you at? Are, are we talking about the economy in general or for multifamily investing? No, economy in general. If you want to peel off into multifamily as we get through this, we will. But let, let's start there first, if you don't mind. Well, I guess as everything else, it's, it's a question of degree, right? How bad is the inflation we're talking about mm -hmm. you know, versus how, how bad the unemployment? Um, I, I think that obviously if we have a hyperinflation situation, that is really going to be disruptive for the yeah. economy um, because it just makes it very difficult to transact business. And, you know, everything is affected by that. It's obviously eats away at people's savings very quickly. Uh, it just eats away the value of everything. So I think, you know, inflation that's like, you know, 10%, it's, and technically speaking, 10% inflation is not hyperinflation, right? Hyperinflation right. is, is like, you know, 100% inflation. 10% inflation is just really bad inflation. And we've mm -hmm. never had hyperinflation in this country, even after the American Revolution, when mm. the paper currency issued by the, the know, continental by, or whatever it was, the, yeah. the continentals was was worthless. Uh, we didn't have hyperinflation hmm. even then. J just that the paper currency was worthless, but people use were using gold and stuff anyway, right? So right. we didn't have. Uh, we've never had. We've never experienced hyperinflation in this country. So when people talk about hyperinflation, you have to really kind of take that with a big grain of salt because mm -hmm. mostly they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> What yeah, they, they like the talking. term. They like the term. They talk about South Africa or Germany, but that's right. That's not going to happen. Yeah, they. Yeah, the st what happened in Latin America, you know, in the '80s and stuff like this is not. If that happened here, like, it, this would be hell in a handbasket. I mean, like that, that. If that, if we did ever see that, that would be like you know, like game over basically, right? But. Yeah. That's not, but that doesn't mean that you have to get there for things to be really bad. True. And and ten percent inflation, you know, which we saw in the late seventies, early eighties, that that was pretty disruptive, right? And you saw what'll happen if we get there. There is no way that interest rates are not going to follow if that happens, right? Yeah. So simply because, and it doesn't really matter what the Fed does, the Fed may be dragged into raising interest rates because what will happen is if you've got that much inflation, anybody who lends money is going to need to charge a higher interest rate to, to counteract the devaluation of the debt that they've just given. Yeah. So they are going to jack up interest rates a lot in order to compensate for that. And you know, for the erosion of the value of the of the debt, and um, that's going to cause all kinds of economic problems, right? So yeah. that so clearly that kind of inflation is is going to be bad. If we have mild inflation, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. If we have you know three even four percent you know inflation, that the, the every central bank in the whole world has been trying to push the economy towards that level of inflation for quite some time. And they've been unable to, because they've been fighting against the deflationary effects of too much debt in the economy, plus mm -hmm. automation, plus outsourcing to China. There are all these de other deflationary forces that have kept wages uh, yeah. down, right? So that, that, plus they've kept prices down too. We you know when you're, everything is being manufactured in China, um, you know, like one, it, it's interesting when you think about that too, like during the whole like America first, like thing during uh, the Trump administration and by all indications, Biden is going to continue that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I saw that. You know, they, they're, they've made resourcing back to the U.S. a priority, mm -hmm. which, which I think is a good thing. However, there's, it's going to cause inflation, right? I mean, there's, there's, there, it's going to. If it bring it may bring jobs back here, but it's also going to make everything more expensive. 
Yeah, so, when I when I look at this question, um, I think I think the talking heads are are either it, just flat out wrong, or they have adopted a story that they know will be expedient to pass huge, gigantic spending bills. Because yes, as we talked about in episode one, unemployment's a problem. People, you know, a million more people getting emergency relief, which means they've been 39 weeks without a job. That's bad. I understand. But as we also said, we are very close to the end of this and the snowball will be picking up steam. And at some point it will be just be this force that just pulls people out. And as I said, bring inflation with it. So I think the unemployment problem for the most part uh, will work itself out in the next nine to 12 months, right? It'll start slow and pick up steam. But I think that is same is true for inflation, right? I'm looking for signs of inflation. So far we've seen um, supply chain inflation, right? Or chips, right? There's not enough chips to make cars. Then we saw lumber inflation. There's not enough lumber to build homes. Just this morning, Anheuser-Busch, right? I'm, I'm reading financial statements or at least financial summaries. Not, kind of not beer inflation. inflation. You're yeah, not, dude. Not beer inflation. Yeah, no, we sorry. Beer inflation. <laughs> well, right now you're lucky because Anheuser-Busch had a record quarter, sees a record year. And they said, unfortunately, we're going to have to eat margin because commodities are increasing. Um, they said that they they did not say this. They expected to be transitory. That's what we've been he hearing from home builders and auto manufacturers is we have a, a nine month blip. It'll work itself out. We'll be all good. That was not in Anheuser Busch's. At least I didn't read the entire story. I just read the summary page. Um, but you know, it's coming. And I think like the unemployment picture, the snowball gaining steam, pulling people out. I think once inflation picks up, companies can adapt and shrink margins for a little while. I think inflation is the bigger problem. And I think the talking heads uh, on TV are either just wrong or have adopted a story because they want to spend some freaking money. Well, but again, it, it really depends on what's causing the inflation, right? And, sure. and if you've got, if, if the inflation is not too big, right? And it's also being reflected in wages, then I might be you know, wage driven. Let me just say that. I think a lot yeah. of this end up might be wage driven, not the other well, way. But that, but then that's actually that's sort of good inflation, if you will, right? Because it means that people are making more money, like mm -hmm. more of more wages are getting, you know, to workers and sure. like that it, we have a consumption driven economy. True. So that's that is a good thing. It's a it's a bad thing when and if you've got and to the extent that like you said, if if they are like temporary supply chain hiccups because like people have been idle because right. of coronavirus or they, they can only work they can yeah, have to space people out at the, during the shifts so they can't they can't make as much stuff yep. right there's a whole bunch of that that's been happening that's caused uh, you know also and then there's there are some sectors of the economy that are like you know home building which has just seen this incredible spike yep. and like of course when you suddenly have more demand for the same thing, you're going to get inflation. Like just, sure. that's just no question. Yep. The, the market ought to respond with that by increasing the production of lumber and what, what have you, uh, assuming that they can get people back like working in the mills yeah. and stuff. Cause they're not, they're not at lower capacity. Right. So there's probably two, like with that, there's two things going on at once. It's like a supply, a like a supply, uh, yeah. sorry, Pick a, demand, a demand, a demand increase and a yeah. supply hiccup. Demand pull time. versus caught. Yeah. Yeah. Demand. And it's happening. Both of both of them are happening, yep. right? In the in the lumber industry. And probably for some of the commodities too, to the extent that they're going into houses, like maybe I don't know, you know, wheat and barley maybe something else. But if you're talking about like copper for wiring and yeah, copper's you know, at a like, nine year high, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. I think it's nine eight or like nine year high. Stuff like that for the same reason. Like you've got just well, well there, let's play that out. Play My biggest right. concern, and I think I've told you before, is I think they're setting us up for a $4 trillion infrastructure bill. And a lot of infrastructure, pick a number, half, 40% of that will be lumber, copper, cement, just the broad building blocks. Uh, and you do that into an envi environment that's already has a supply, I don't know, issues, challenges. It, it, it could have unexpected uh, ramifications for, for lots of things. Yeah, but that but that doesn't worry me as much for, for the inflation because okay. that will take such a long time. I mean, that's like a 10-year 
it's like not going to be spent. yeah the, none of the job very few jobs are shovel ready to your point right yeah exactly i mean all that stuff takes all this is we're talking about like years and years of planning before you even like turn the first spade right so yeah eh, it's maybe for, for a lot of it yeah right? sure for and, most yes for most of it yes and also i mean to the extent that that like sucks up a lot of the unemployment like that would actually help too Right. Yeah. And and not to mention the fact that like our, we've allowed our infrastructure to just become degraded over the last you know couple of generations. So yeah, we it's it's yeah. creating a lot of productivity loss. There's the no question that so, we should be doing something for our infrastructure. That yeah. please don't. Yeah, I am for that. I just I just think it's going to. Um, yeah, I think it's going to have unexpected ramifications. Net probably net positive, but I just I just don't like how all the talking heads from Yellen uh, to Powell, all of these folks are all focused on unemployment. I think by, you know, this time next year, for example, February of 2022, unemployment won't be a problem. We'll be sub 5%. We'll have another million women who had to come off the unemployment, go back. So the U3, U6 right. disaster uh, won't be as bad. Um, but you know, I think, I think inflation, you know, February of next year, like you say, could be between three and 5%. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe not. But I think, and if we take this back to real estate, if, uh, three, three to 5% average four, that means the 10 years got to be up. That means mortgage rates got to be up. That means, you know, as we talked about, that can impact cap rates. That can impact values. I mean, this, you're, you're going to have to be paying attention if you're in real estate next year, I think. Yeah, and, and listen, then if we want to shift the focus of this to real estate specifically, mm -hmm. then, I mean, listen, unemployment is always a, a problem for real estate, right? Sure. People got to have jobs to pay rent. And uh, now if you're, if you're giving them a check, then they don't actually need to have the job, I suppose. They can still pay the rent. But they, you know, all things being equal, you want people employed if yep. you're in real estate, right? Sure. So, um and if wages are going up, that means that you can raise your rents and that's that's good for you. I think if we have some inflation and it causes interest rates to go up and it causes cap rates to go up as a result, then the issue really becomes when did you buy your property and at yep. what price? And how much how much longer do you have on your on your note before you have to refinance it? Right. If you have if you're still early in on your on your note it's not going to matter that much because if you've got inflation and it's causing your rents to go up, then your NOI is going to rise and the, the rising cap rates after 10 years, who knows where it's going to be. Maybe it's going to compress again, but even if it, even if it goes up by a couple of points, uh, you'll probably still wind up. Okay. Right. You're not going to be in, in bad shape. The issue is if you, if you bought at the top, you, you know, you, you've got, you, there wasn't a whole lot of meat left on the bone when you bought it. You have a huge debt to service and you're, and it's like, you've got five year paper yeah. and now you've got, and you have to refinance just when, you know, inflation is spiking and interest rates are spiking. That is kind of a recipe for disaster, right? Because yeah. you won't have had enough time to really build that NOI through the inflation of your rents. And uh, you're going to have to come up with additional capital because you're going to have yeah, to, to, get to the refinance at a, yeah. yeah, you're going to have to refinance at a at a higher cap rate. So then it really just becomes, you know, how bad is the inflation? And like you said before, if it is a disaster scenario and it's ten percent inflation, I mean that is going to be a devastating yeah. event for some people. <laughs> that right? it's funny because if it's ten percent inflation, that could be so bad we just get another round of extended for ten. What yeah. might be the real problem if it's like four percent? And then they just they just call the herd and they go, okay, you're weak hand, you're weak hand, you're strong, we'll keep you right. They pick winners and losers. I mean, we we you know, either is possible. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's going to be. I mean, listen, let's just try to like play this out. If we had ten percent inflation, sure. right, and now lenders are wanting to have you know interest rates of ten percent or more. Oh well, it won't be ten notes. if it's inflation's ten. It's got to be. 13 or 15 let's be let's be real well, right it depends yeah i mean we'll, we would neither one of us you know you 
we remember True. this as kids, but we didn't actually. Yeah, like, I remember reading about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've well, never experienced it. Let's be clear. That's right. We haven't tried to like invest in that <laughs> yeah. kind of environment. Very true. Right? Very true. So, so it's hard to figure exactly how high interest rates like would go, but um, that the fact of the matter is they would go up. Oh, they would have to. And yeah. and that would be and that would force cap rates to rise because it just they would have to do to, for you. To yeah, I think, I think term. cap rates so, would rise faster than you could raise rents, right? One of the things about yearly leases is if it's yeah. like you, we've talked about, right? If the inflation is running hot and you get one or two year leases, you really can't, you can't kind of catch up. Yeah. And I think what you'd see is a lot of sh- shorter lease terms, right? Ah, you start, good. you start, you start seeing a lot of six month leases, you know, people would get as short term as their lenders would allow them. And maybe yeah. the lenders would get more flexible too. Yeah. They would, be concerned about you being able to, you know, pay, pay your debt service. So, yeah, well, um, this is a conversation I expect us to be having probably in Q3, Q4. We'll, we'll see where it's going. I, I, I certainly appreciate that unemployment is the topic of the day. It is horrible people, 39 weeks over a million. It's, it's just bad. I feel, I, it's, it, I feel for those folks. I've been there as a, as yeah. a young man and remember that. So next we're going to talk about the 10 year treasury rising and, and what that means. Uh, thank you for your time, Jonathan.